I want to show you how to do what I call slip impasto. And that's where you put a, throw a pot and then coat it with a really thick slip. And then finger paint with it. You can use tools, you can use your fingers. It takes you right back to your childhood. So what I like to do is throw these on bats. That way I can take it off and work on another piece. If you don't have the luxury of having bats, you may have to leave it on the wheel till it firms up. It takes a while to dry because you're going to be adding quite a bit of water, quite a bit of slip. Also, with the slip, it's not an ordinary slip. You can use an ordinary slip. If just take and make a thick slip out of the clay body you're, that you're using. But I'm using a porcelain slip on top of a stoneware body. Here's a piece that I did this, this way. And there's a little bit of difference in the shrinkage. The way to fix that is to do what we call deflocculation. We deflocculate the slip so it uses less, less water than you would have to do to bring it to a slip otherwise. So this is a porcelain slip mixed with a few drops of, and you mix it up really, really, really thick. Add a few drops of sodium silicate and then keep stirring and it works well if you have an electric stirrer or a hand mixer. And what you'll ha find is it'll get loose again. You may even have to add a little bit more clay. So that way there's less water in it, less shrinkage, and it'll fit the body. Now if you do use a slip, make sure the shrinkage is similar to the clay body. I found I'm using B-Mix with Grog and Babu Porcelain. It's a very white, beautiful porcelain. If you use another kind of clay, be careful. Uh, clay like a brown stoneware, the shrinkage is different, and what you'll find will happen, it will be fine when you put it on, maybe when it dries, worse yet, when it bisques, it flakes off because the clay is incompatible it shrinks differently. So you want to make sure your slip and your body of the pot, the clay body that you're using to throw the pot, are similar in shrinkage. So let me throw a bottle or maybe a vase and show you how to do this. I'm throwing it on a bat, so I'm going to dampen the bat ever so lightly first to get that clay to stick. all the steps of getting a basic pot. Then comes the fun. Since it's a bottle, I'm not going to be trimming very much, so I'm leaving it pretty thin, maybe a quarter of an inch on the bottom. And I'm also opening the bottom flat. So I can get more out of the clay, get a bigger piece. Smooth and compress before you close. And before you lift.
keep the water out at the bottom. Rib those lines off the outside. Also going to get rid of that sl slope just by going down with the tip of the wooden rib. That way I can use this clay again. I don't have to trim it off and mess with it later. So. Top in a little bit. Use my rib and stretch it from the inside out. There's a wonderful potter named Michael Frimkus. The studio is in Venice, and he liked to make what he called thinware. He never would use water to throw the piece after he'd centered it and done and the initial lifting. He just used his fingertips and he used ribs and he equated it to throwing like playing a musical instrument. You put one rib on the inside and one on the outside. Go up and down and his paper his pots are paper paper thin. So I've got a basic pot here. Rib, rib the shape a little bit better on the outside. Bring the neck in. Notice I'm keeping this at an angle. I'm not letting it go too horizontal. You do that at the end you don't want it collapsing on you. Just refining that shape and getting that slip off the surface. By ribbing it on the inside and the outside, I'm back to being plastic clay. You spend a lot of time working the piece and a lot of time with a lot of water you may want to wait a little while before adding the slip because you're going to be adding water when you do the slip. So clean all that water off. So you're happy with the form, happy with the neck, happy with the lip. Okay, so I've got all the water off of it. Got a basic form. I'm leaving clay down here for support. Now comes the fun part. You get your so your modified slip, and it's kind of thick and beautiful. Isn't that nice? And then take it and squeeze it onto the surface. I'm going to get a nice thick gooey coat. The person who does this really beautifully is Stephen Hill. Another artist you could look at is Tom Coleman. He's a master of this. So the two of those guys really have this down. So at this point I've got the slip on there. Now I could play. Now Stephen Hill might take a rib and Go across it. Don't like what you did, just bring it back. You may want to just use your fingers. 
make a spiral. Kind of like that. So, lots of possibilities. With this pot, I went up the side. I'm just going to go with the spiral one. And just think how the glaze is going to break on that. Should be quite beautiful. Clean that extra slip off. Now I could wait and trim this later, but I'm going to do a little pre-trim now. With my wooden stick. And you feel the wheel head. Take it out slowly. And by putting the stick in with the round side facing you, so the wheel's pushing the clay through that round side, it pushes it away from the form. and makes it much, much easier to take off. You get a little bit of the porcelain in with your other clay. There's so little, it's not going to really, really affect it. As long as you wedge it up really well after you're done. Undercut a little bit. And remember, when you throw on a bat, make sure you remember to cut the pot off the bat, but leave it on the bat to dry. So I'm going to run the wire underneath. And leave it. So I can take this away and do another. Now leave this alone to firm up on the outside before you cover it, because you'll smear your design. Another thing you can do, this will want to dry sooner up here. So after it gets firm, put a little plastic over there. I'll sometimes put a little thin piece of plastic and a rubber band just to hold it, and that allows the pot to dry evenly. So that's how you do slip impasto. That's a really fun process. Thank you.